Welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to be doing Security Plus performance based question number 20. Uh, this one's going to be on redundancy. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. If you have any questions, please leave a chat or email info at cybercrafttraining.com. I'd be happy to answer your question. Okay, so this is Security, Play, Security Plus uh, question 20 on redundancy. Uh, looks like we have, we have to do something with the RAID here. Let's just take a look exactly like we're going to do this on the test. So I'm going to read the scenario. You're a system administrator for a large data-heavy company and have been tasked with determining the best RAID configuration for the organization based on their requirements. You need to complete the RAID schemes and determine which RAID configuration will allow your organization to continue normal operations even if one complete disk is lost. Okay. So as I mentioned in my course, and you should be aware, you're probably going to get at least one question on RAID on your exam. Uh, in some form. It might not be a performance-based question, but there'll probably be at least one multiple choice question on RAID in some time. Not always, but usually you'll get one. So it very pays to know your RAID levels, the common ones. Okay, use the drop-down selectors to select bits within each disk to complete the RAID configuration. Then use the radio selectors, radio selectors, to select the RAID configuration that would protect the organization's data if one complete disk were lost. I don't know if that's supposed to be, say, radio. I think they mean radial. Okay, anyway. So we have a RAID 1, disk 0, disk 1, and disk 2. Okay, well, RAID 1 is mirroring. We shouldn't have three disks here. Why do we have three disks here? I mean, you could... You could do RAID 1 with three disks, so RAID 1 is just mirroring. That's it, so this should be the same as disk 0. Bit 3, bit parity bit, interesting. Okay, there's no parity with RAID 1, so it's just going to be the same, but I don't know why they have a disk 2. It should just be the same again. I think this has to be here just to try and throw you off. Normally, RAID 1 is simple mirroring. And if you want to go beyond that, you do RAID 10, like a, a RAID, which is a RAID 1 plus 0, where you have two sets of RAID 1s and you have mirroring between them. Um, that also provides some other benefits. Okay, anyway, I, I'm pretty sure that should be right. Would RAID 1 configuration protect data if one complete disk was lost? Yes. If a complete disk was lost, protect data yeah it should we would be able to recover the data I don't know why we have a disk 2 okay RAID 5 RAID 5 provides uh, parity okay so it does mirroring and parity what this means and that's why you see we have a parity bit here okay so this makes sense so what happens here with RAID 5 you need at least three disks and you have to have uh, that parity bit is put on each disk. So if one of the disks fails, you can, that error is detected, and then you can recover the data from the other two disks. So the information is split on the three disks. You need that third disk to provide that parity. So it provides mirroring and parity. So it looks like we just fill this out kind of like a, a Sudoku. So this would be two. If this is two, then this is one. If this is one, then this is parity. That's parity, then this is two. And if this is two, then that's one. Okay. That's like a Sudoku. It's the first Sudoku I've seen on a test. <laughs> would RAID 5 configuration protect data if one complete disk was lost? Yes, okay. I think this is right. Though I'm not sure about why we have a second disk there. Okay, let's read, their, let's read their explanation. All right, fault tolerance ensures that data is available in the event of inevitable failures. With the RAID 1 configuration, data is mirrored across the drives, right? That means that each subsequent drive holds the same information as the other. The mirroring means that with a RAID 1 configuration, you, are, you achieve significant redundancy, but no performance increase. It's true. As a side note, you normally would not configure three drives for RAID 1, as that would allow two drives to fail and isn't a good use of disk space. Yeah, I don't know why we have a second disk here for RAID 1. 
you can do it, I guess. That's confusing, honestly, because this is not a common use of RAID 1. Uh, which the bit configuration across the drives of particular data is written to the first disk, disk zero in a usual fashion, one bit after another. After each successive disk would be exact copy of that one. You're out. It's straight mirroring. If you if you take a thumb drive and you copy the contents of your hard drive, now you have a thumb drive, you've mirrored your drive, right? That's the same type of concept. It's a straight backup. All right, with RAID 5, not only this data is striped, yeah, we, we have striping and parity. Okay, so... Let me explain. Striping, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is a method of writing the data across multiple disks in what are known as stripes. Okay. All right. So with RAID 5 configuration, not only is data striped across the drives, but the concept includes the parity bit, which allows reconstruction of missing data in the event of a complete loss of a drive. This configuration gives an increase in performance while compared to RAID 1, as well as data redundancy. Right. In contrast to RAID 1, data is mixed up across a drive, but the data is carefully placed in the event of a total disk failure, the information can be recovered. Okay, that's, that's true. And the way this is laid out is done in a particular way. Now, parity is uh, a way to check for errors. Let me explain parity real quick. So let me pull up uh, Notepad. Okay, so if we have a string of bits, Say we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So if we have these three or these four strings of uh, drive, we could have a parity bit that would check either if there's an even number of ones or an odd number of ones, okay? So if there's an odd number of ones, we can have a one here. If there's an even number of ones, we would have a zero. Odd number of ones, we'd have a one. And an even number of ones, or an, this should be an odd number of ones, or an even number of ones, we'd have a zero, okay? So if we have an odd number of ones, we would have only one one here, as in in this string of eight, we only have one one. Does that make sense? We only have one uh, instance of a one bit. And here we have two instances of a one bit, so we have a zero as our parity bit. So the parity bit by itself doesn't correct errors, it only detects errors. Okay, but if we look at our RAID example, we have that information stored across three disks. So say we lose disk one, okay? We still have the two bits of information on disk zero and disk two, okay? So with the parity bits that are located there, we can reconstruct, we'd be able to uh, determine that there is an error and we can swap in a new disk that disk two and disk zero would write the information onto again. So you need a minimum of three disks with RAID, RAID five um, to provide that striping and that parity. And there's also some other common RAID configurations. I think the ones you would wanna know for the test would be RAID one, uh, RAID five, and RAID 10. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. It's a pretty straightforward one. Again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in Security Plus training, check out the links in the descriptions. Check out my Security Plus course if you like my teaching style. I have over 30 hours of videos to teach you every concept of Security Plus. If you like watching videos, you're going to find everything there. Uh, and you're going you're gonna to pass your exam going through my course. And if you like uh, my teaching style and you want a live instructor session, uh, check out one of my boot camps. I teach Security Plus boot camps every month. Join in. You get a first-time pass guarantee. Your vouchers included. We're going to help you schedule your exam and everything's, it's all inclusive. So if you sign up, you're basically going to pass. But I was hopeful, I hope that was helpful.